I get sentimental about certain cars. Cars that tell a story. I've been building and racing cars for 20 years now, and it still gives me tremendous satisfaction. What I think excites me the most about building cars is the, the journey, the starting of it all, the you know, finding the car, knowing what the car was, knowing what the car can be. Working with Gran Turismo and Mario Andretti, we're going right back to the beginning, to where it started. It's a love story. It's reuniting with a first love. Always saying, you're on that dance floor, you gotta dance, whether you like the music or not. One of only three drivers to win on paved ovals, road courses, and dirt tracks in a single season. I wanted to win this race so bad that you can't believe it. The only man to win Driver of the Year award in three different decades. You'd be surprised when you really want to be there and you want to excel, how I just, you find a way, you just find a way. I was born and raised in Italy, and um, we were living in Montona, and the family did not have a car. But for some reason, we were captured by this aura of racing. Aldo and I actually, uh, we built a little buggy with the four wheels and a little steering, and we were pushing each other down the one hill which was in front of our house, and there was pretty steep hill and then it was slightly level and then was turning. We wouldn't just go and drive nice. We'd go, ah, you know, we just lean it over, ah, you know, and things like that. After Second World War, the border shifted and we were trapped inside the communist country, which at the time the occupation was Yugoslavia. We move on to Luka, which uh, we were in a refugee camp for seven and a half years. And uh, there was a garage next to where the main entrance was. And um, we befriended uh, the, the owners there and uh, they were repairing and also parking cars. So that's where we learned how to drive. You know, at like age 11, 12. Uh, in 1954, they decided to take us to Monza to see the Italian Grand Prix. At the time, you know, on the sports side, the motor racing was so prominent with Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, you know. It just captivated us. The sound of the engines were just, uh, oh gosh, it was so awesome. Yeah, there was something about danger, this, that there's a lure somewhere, I guess. The one that I was really interested in at that point was uh, Alberto Ascari, who was driving for Ferrari. He was current world champion. You know, he, just the way he was being described by the press, you know, like ice blood flowing through his veins and, you know, just very relaxed but aggressive. And I can tell you that um, the mold was cast that day. Um, and, uh, and I said, you know, please, dear God, if, uh, there's one wish you could grant me to become a race driver someday in my life. Arriving to America was very exciting from the standpoint that uh, what is going to be like, you know, what is, is going to be. And I remember clearly the sailing under the Statue of Liberty. And, uh, and then you're looking at the backdrop of uh, Manhattan. And uh, we made our way to Nazareth. We arrived there in midweek. I think it was a Thursday or something like that. And Sunday night, the following Sunday night, we were just there and, uh, you know, after dinner. And all of a sudden, we see lights, bright lights in the background. And uh, all of a sudden, a big roar. And so I figured there's a race going on somewhere. So Aldo and I looked at each other. We booked. It was a fairground local fairground and a half a mile track. We were just peeking through the fence and they had these brute modified cars. I think, oh my God, I mean, they look like little monsters, you know, 
compared to Formula One cars, but uh, they look very doable. Like you look at a Formula One car, figure, oh gosh, I couldn't build that. But this figure, almost something clicked, you know, it says, this looks like could be viable, you know, for us to get involved in. So clearly, all of a sudden, America will not be too bad after all. Aldo and I, uh, we started going to the races. We go to every Sunday. And uh, we don't know when, but we figure, you know, we're gonna figure out a way to get involved. Well, you know, you develop friendships and you talk. And I figure, you know, why don't you guys start building a car? There was a suggestion to build something that was very popular in the NASCAR circuit. The NASCAR circuit was becoming, uh, obviously it was really picking up steam and factories were involved. You had Ford, Chevy, Chrysler. At that time uh, it was uh, Hudson. Get an all new Hudson with all season air conditioning. A Hudson V8, the most beautiful performer of them all. And on the short tracks, the Hudson were really, you know, were the ones that were winning most of the races. So the suggestion was, why don't you build a Hudson? Go get a Hudson, you know, in the junkyard. All you need is the shell. And then start, you know, building and putting uh, all the characteristics that you need. To do that, you need some money, right? So we didn't have much money, you know, but we scrambled here and there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got a couple of bucks, this and that. So we gathered a few dollars to buy the car, buy some parts. You know, as you can imagine, uh, we had no place of our own. Evo Taviani was the one that actually gave us a garage because we had to keep the car there. And, you know, we got busy. We, little by little, just uh, learning what we need. The interior, basically, it's an empty shell for the seat. <laughs> we took two, like, uh, I think we're like, I don't know, probably 25 gallon barrels, then patted it, patted it all around and, and just taped, just regular electric tape and so forth. And then for a fuel tank to be safe, we used uh, a beer keg. Maybe everything seized, the water pump seized. The car that Mario and his brother Aldo actually raced was a 1948 Hudson. And the car that we've managed to find is a slightly later one, about a 52, 53. They're actually at the core of the same car underneath. They're just different trim packages. They changed those kind of things over the year to update them. The core of it, the bones of it are correct. It's the six cylinder flathead, single carb, correct body, two door coupe. This we can turn into Mario's race car. We started in 1957. To be legal, driving legal, you had to be 21. So we have until 1961. Technically, we've got four years to build this thing, so it should be easy, right? Two years later, 1959, car was ready, ready to go. Painted, beautiful, number seven, uh, probably lucky number. And that's it, you know, we were ready to go. So we figure, well, Aldo, are we gonna wait two years? No. <laughs> the anxiety and everything was just unbelievable in going into that race day because we had no idea, you know, how, you know, we would fare. And the question was, who first? Coin toss and Aldo wins the toss. And I was happy <laughs> because <laughs> see how he does. We're watching and he's passing cars, passing cars. It's only a 10 lap heat. And he wins the heat, $25. That alone, you know, was encouraging because we had, you know, uh, we had some debts. So uh, the pressure was on for me the following weekend, you know, because Aldo goes on and, and he wins. So that was my turn. I had the proverbial butterflies. And quite honestly, you know, I always say that, um, uh, you know, that I always say, well, someday I'm going to be so confident and um, I'm not going to have any butterflies anymore. You know, I'm going to be, 
You know something? To the very last race, the same butterflies were always there. And what I came to realize was that uh, unless they were there, it would have been meaningless to do what I was doing. That means it was that important. To me, just the fact that we were a part of the scene, we were racing. I feel I could get in a car today and just uh, feel like I never left it. <laughs>